Hey everybody, welcome back to Roosters in Columbus, Ohio. This is Letterman Live, brought to you by our, our good friends at Roosters. Don't forget that all month of July, they're saying thanks to everyone in our community, all the heroes, 20% uh, off uh, both carry out and dine in if you want to come in <laughs> and awesome. hang out with us. Uh, do that. I'm Austin Ward. That's Anthony Schlegel. <laughs> Two of them. He's double fisting. He's Big the different mac and cheese bites. Big time. Justin Zwick, Doug Worthington in the house because it's defensive line week mm -hmm, at nice. Letterman Row. And it's also going to be, I think, a nice week of debate because I think the Big Ten Network completely botched the all Big Ten decade team. <coughs> we can get into Go figure. That. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Uh, right? Of course they have to. Yeah, so we can we can get into that. Uh, but let's, let's start with this defensive line. Uh, Doug, Larry Johnson, he's pretty good. I mean, when it comes down to... Like, just gurus in a game. I mean, I think he's second to none in his college field. Um, I actually went to Penn State back in my days and, and went to his camp, and I learned so much, and he was so hands-on. Um, he's real passionate about his players. Mm -hmm. um, so this is from top to bottom. I seen a few years ago, Tom Ali, you know, taking uh, a young Bosa and, and showing him moves, and it's just one of those things where you play like for a guy named like Larry Johnson, um, he just kind of embeds just that spirit of the lineman, and it's, it's cool to see. I wish I got a chance to play. I love Silver Fox. Acock, you know what I mean? But when it comes down <laughs> to what he fun. does uh, on a football field, it's, uh, it's tremendous. I I've been blessed to have a couple opportunities to go like into meetings with them and, and you know, pick Larry Johnson's brain. It's What he does is not complicated, right? You know this better than, than anybody. You watch, right. they've got – he teaches four moves. Right. And they don't, one of them's not a spin. It's, it's nothing fancy. You watch these guys. It's pretty basic, and he drills it over and over and over. What he does with the hands is crazy. But Man, repetition is the, is the mother of success. He knows the formula when it comes down to what you have to have in the arsenal. Now, there's other things that as you go on, you, you learn from him. You know what I mean? When you see probably some of the stuff that you're able yeah. to see, maybe because he doesn't do some certain things on the camera, but he, he has the whole gauntlet. You know what I mean? When it comes down to the dip and the rip, when it comes down to the stabbing, when it comes down to just even spinning, because you see those guys, they know how to spin. <laughs> so it's one of those things where for for him to, to have his crafts and the mastery, I mean, he has all the gadgets, and he teaches those guys so well. Their practices are so intense. Um, and he's, a, he's just one of the better coaches in college football. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chime in because, one, I've, I've seen what I think makes Larry great besides what he does at Ohio State with the current guys. <laughs> But it's the fact that on Wednesday nights, mm. like he's breaking down film of the guys that are still playing well in the said. league. Well said. Right? Who else is doing that? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I believe that, you know, that's kind of the beauty of having Kerry Combs come back because he can go up, call a guy in the league and see what they did and watch film and add those to the repertoire. But then the guys that are currently playing also get to go work with those guys. Right. And then from the fundamental standpoint of his four things and working on hands that he does over time, and he makes it really, really simple. Like I always look at coaches and the coaching cues that they use that guys understand. Right. I'm, like, I'm talking to my son right now about baseball and hitting and what we're doing in these all these different drills are just for him to feel it, right? So then he, but once they feel it and understand it, it's about how they learn it, right? So Larry's great about how he can articulate that to them, but then as they move forward, right, and the things that he studies, he's not just studying the hands, he's studying their get off, right? right? He's studying how fast they can put that foot, for, that first foot in the ground, and his drills are all set up. So when he goes to the sand pit, there's a reason. When he does, his drills during practice they grow into the next drill and into the third drill and then he combines them so once they learn the first drill then they go into the first drill plus the second drill then once they got the first and the second drill down then it goes into the third drill and then that's how you see him build in the cardio conditioning work yeah. into their drills because you have to be able to bend your you know bend your knees and your and turn your hips and use your hands when you're fatigued in a play right and that's how he I just watch him how he builds that into his drill work and it's phenomenal yeah yeah now does he when he watches that film Schlegs of guys who have left and kind of went on does he maybe give them reports oh, I mean, so, so this is a guy who no great coach but even better coach because he stays in touch with his guys as they go into league saying hey this is what i watched this is what i saw you know maybe yeah. here's something to work on you know that sort of thing one Player. thing i saw one sorry so one thing i saw from this though is because this formula doesn't change for him when he's looking at that it doesn't even have to necessarily come from Larry Johnson. If Nick and Joey are watching mm -hmm. each other play and they pick something up they all know how they were taught well, Tom Ali's the same thing like, yeah. right. they, it, 
anybody who's been coached by Larry Johnson has this this vast amount of resources where players that have spent three or four years learning, they can all look at each other's clips right. or they can pass down or, you know, call Zach Harrison and say, hey, I watched you on Saturday. Mm-hmm. This is where that step is. You know that's not right. Right. And the, the other thing, too, is like this is a guy that is obsessed with, about D-line play. Yes. Like to be elite, you have to, you are 100% all in. I remember just having a conversation with him one time and he he keeps his phone by his bedside because like he if he wakes up in the middle of the night and has an idea, he types it into his phone because awesome. the man is always thinking about his players right. and how to maximize them. So just him watching film, he goes to sleep, he wakes up, boom, he grabs his phone, he types it in. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, maybe this is what this guy needs to trip to understand what I'm trying to teach him. The man is obsessed with making his players current and past great. What's up? You know? which, which is why I think that's, it goes it helps him recruit these players even more because you say he doesn't just – Usually, in a, you know, abuse you, abuse you. No. He, he keeps on you <laughs> right. and stays after you. And, and, you know, no matter where you are, probably even if you aren't in the league, he's probably checking in on his guys, making sure they're doing what, you know, he thinks they should be doing, you know, as men out in the community. Well, that, that's that's how you build up the guys mm-hmm. that want to come here. Yeah. Because that's the added value. Just like we talk about the Brotherhood of Ohio State, right? Yeah. And what, what, what we're all are doing is because we played and then we utilize those resources for the next career. Right. Right. So, hey, if I got a guy like Larry Johnson, you associate head coach of Ohio State football, who not only is going to give me everything he has while I'm here to develop me to go to the next level, but also will spend time, energy, and effort to make me elite at that level. Like, that's the system. That's the culture I want to be in because it's just not four years and I'm done. Mm -hmm. It's a lifetime of this profession. And then once I get done, hey, how can I help you as a man and, and, and as a father and all those other things that he adds to the table? Because Larry Johnson is a godly man. He has the best interest of his players, not only while he's here but yeah. as a grown man down the, you know 10 15 years down the road like how do i evaluate what i did to my kids while i had them tell me yeah, in 20 I years it. i love it i got a good story with a guy named chris baker that i played with at the washington redskins um chris actually flunked flunked out got in trouble and left to go with howard um and play ball and play the rest of his uh his, his college career and actually went free agent for the Broncos and uh, then we met over there at uh, the Washington Redskins but like he would still reach out to Coach Johnson and he only played for him for about two seasons yeah. uh, but he, he took that time to still cultivate that relationship and make sure that he was still going to be okay when he came down to you know him leaving the school and me telling and you know confessing to your parents hey I'm going to take care of your, your son I'm going to make sure he's in a good space mm-hmm. and even that when that faltered he still had the, 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 the great spirit enough to just go out there and still make sure that he's okay and Chris played a, about a seven-year NFL career from from that school, and he probably didn't, you know, have all the tools or the size of that nature. But just when it comes down to that type of communication and that type of leverage, like a Larry Johnson, um, it did it did so much for him. Great story, yeah. And that's yeah. it's fun to hear. You know, if you haven't seen uh, my Chase Young story last year from their relationship with Larry Johnson and that recruitment, how that plays out, uh, please check that out because it's really remarkable how they work. And so to get guys like that, Jay Z, you're taking a snap and you look out and you see. Tyreek Smith and Zach Harrison and Jonathan Cooper and Tyler Friday. Uh, a bunch of monsters out there. Yeah. That's got to be a little uh Yeah, I'm hoping I have Ohio State's <laughs> offensive line in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's it's special. Uh, I mean, you know, started kind of – we've always had good good DNs here. I mean, you think back to 2 when I was there. I mean, Darian Scott, Will Smith, yep. I mean, Tim Anderson, I mean – we had players, and, and they just continued to grow, and we were seeing these guys go in the top five now, so maybe it's a little bit on a different <laughs> yeah, level, yeah, but definitely. you know, we're, we're a rich tradition at Ohio State in that position, and uh, it just seems, you know, you lose you lose some players, but just the way they recruit and you know, the way the history has gone, you know, and losing other position players is they just step right back up, and, and you know, you expect them to have a great year and be right where the team was last year. So I'm excited to see Zach's – Growth, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, he got in a little bit last year. Got right. a feel for it. He wasn't well. the main guy. Yeah, well. he played well. But you know, now it's like he's the spotlight. Yeah. You know, now what happens? It was kind of like with Nick. I think when he, yeah. you know, he was coming in. Oh boy, here we yeah. go. You know, the spotlight is there. You know, and uh, you know, it's about how you handle that, and you know what you're doing outside of there to pre- prepare yourself. But I'm excited to see, you know, what what he's able to do um, this year. I think we'll have a lot more on his shoulders. And then, you know, I think I think Cooper's going to be the guy everybody kind of looks at to start the year if he's healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, 
you might see some double teams there or something just to help out. And so these younger guys who maybe not, you know, everybody knows about have, have a little chance early on in the season to, uh, you know, steal some sacks and Definitely. make some big plays. When it comes down to it, uh, you know, stealing sacks and things of that nature, when you have guys like Zach Harrison or Cooper who's going to be, you know, prime time and everybody's going to have their, their – you're going to get one-on-one blocks, and mm -hmm. that's what you need. Right. So those guys are going to have more than an opportunity. But Ohio State is becoming a factory. I mean, as you see, when it comes down to our strength staff and what Mitch be able to do here and how he's just been able to develop these guys over and over, and then you got, you know, a Larry Johnson who was somebody who is just revered and is renowned at the, at, the, at the position coach but but then you have that relationship with guys in the league you you want to be able to have guys that you know have had success mm -hmm. and people that you want to reach out to eventually mm -hmm. you know he talked about 02 like Darian Scott I played with him with the Redskins Will Smith was like a me being from New York he he gave me a key he, he, he allowed me to to uh, to have a presence and have this a relationship with them so these guys see that they know the quality they know the pedigree and it's going to be things like you know you, you're not knowing exactly who Chase Young is until the last two years of his career and then he's able to do what he did. You know, Zach Harrison, you're going to look at the leap from this year to next year. You're going to be like, wow, this guy, I hope he stays. So it's one of those things where he won't. over and over, <laughs> over and over, these guys are just being around each other. And then you look at the offensive line. You know, iron sharpens iron. So when it comes down to how they compete and the way that they know, like, hey, I'm about to go against dogs my whole four or five years. And if, if I no you know, buckle up, I'm going to be able to play on Sunday. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, hey, man, are you coming? Hey, are you coming? Hey, this is Ohio State. Look at the pedigree and things of that nature. My guy, Cameron Hayward, that I took on an a visit for, I mean, Aaron Donald and then Cameron Hayward when it comes down to just the efficiency in the NFL. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it, it's because of the pedigree and it's because of the, the way that they just understand that what type of ball we play at Ohio State. So it's been good, man. It's been a blessing mm -hmm. to be a part of that room. Those are great. I don't even know I what know. else to add. I would, I would say... Um, the a lot one, of passion coming no, from the D-line. I love it. D -line. No, it's D-line week. I know. I know. Well, it's great. You know, the one thing that I think these guys have a little bit different than we've had in the past is that we don't have that one marquee guy that people focus on, right? Because yeah. it was like you had Nick, and then you had kind of everybody else, and they kind of focused on on or on Joey. And Joey, right, right. Then you had then it was Nick's turn, right? And and Chase had a little bit of an opportunity oh, to yeah. like get the to get the one on ones. Yeah. And then this year, you really don't know who that one that they're going to yeah. try to double yeah. team or chip is, right? So I think they're at starting out. It's going to initially be all right. We're not going to you know, slide protect to this one particular right. guy. It's going to be, hey, when I'm called to make the play one-on-one -on -one blocks, like, I got to go make that play. And it'll kind of sift itself out. And the good thing is that you have that leader, that veteran that's been there for mm -hmm. for all of them, mm -hmm. and Jonathan Cooper, to really right. set the standard, right? Yeah. Like, he's going to be the first one in the drill because he's done the drills the most. Right. He's going to set the standard. He's going to be the guy that's working with the other guys. Hey, you know what, dudes? Let's go outside. Let's work on our hands. Coach Johnson's not here, but I'm going to run the drills, right? Yeah. When you get back, especially with COVID, right? And they're not going to have this opportunity like that's going to be the differentiator mm -hmm. as far as week one game one how prepared are we well it's those other reps that we're working on our own as opposed to being in the woody Hayes. hey we can go do this at a high school right. right and do those type of things and then it's going to see hey who can really be healthy and i think the the best part of this for the d-line this year is the fact that you got Kerry combs back in the secondary right. because that's what is a really allowed our d-line to tee off oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. like when they're shutting people down it's a lot easier to get to the quarterback oh, yeah. when he has to sit there and hold the ball third for a option second. yeah right I mean, every and then time. guess what sacks happen mm -hmm. right good yep. things happen oh, yeah. plus we haven't had to do a lot of blitzing yeah. so it's allowed those guys to get home from the secondary standpoint so i think with this younger group besides coop it's they have a, a really good opportunity of having a lot of success early because of all the other pieces of the puzzle that are coming together right, yeah. right. and i would I say do it. not forget about tyreek smith there with well yeah uh going into and his third, Fright, i mean 100 hasn't been healthy the first two years exactly but, you know, last spring you know we're talking to you know chase young about that leap from freshman year to sophomore year and he was just absolutely raving about tyreek smith didn't have that opportunity just couldn't get healthy going into the year he was hurt um, so I'm just with a couple sacks and a forced fumble had one against Cincinnati I think look out for him yeah the part that I think is maybe a little bit um, overlooked hey we you're replacing Chase Young's so people talk about the defensive ends but you look inside Doug mm. uh, you Big take Hamilton. out Jay Sean Cornell, Hamilton Jay yeah. Sean Cornell and Robert Landers right three seniors who had been there and developed for yeah, years well productive I mean that's how important are 
the inside guys to a defensive oh line room. You know, when if it comes down, mind. yeah, when it comes down to it, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta play all phases of the ball. We gotta be able to stop the run so we can be able to get that pass. Um, Slag will hit it on the nose when it comes down to how in tune the whole defense, how how in tune sports is, and that's why it makes football one of the greatest sports ever. Just because if you got linebackers like a Slagle who even if he's wrong, he's gonna come down hard nose when he knows that run. <laughs> he gets me off my double team, and now I look sweet. But he don't understand that that play wouldn't have happened if he wasn't have that cunning instinct. Great. Or when it comes down to so inside you see how important they, they they make it you know if you have a guy who has a presence when it comes down to like a, Dom, a devon hamilton when he got blocked one-on-one he got sacks yeah, he you know what i mean when they had to go get chase and maryland he had a couple sacks like he he had an opportunity and when he when he made it it was really really good lander's a guy who was a little bit undersized when it comes down to having a chase young on one end he can free somebody he can come do a stunt and go outside and run that hoop like a defensive end mm-hmm. so you like guys who just have different type of punches so when it comes down to that inside and he'll tell you when that when those guards is getting pushed into your face yes. and you don't have that much time, <laughs> yeah. guess what? You can't you, step up. Look at yeah. now you got the g- great divas of backs, and we're talking about how we're gonna always have a DBU. Like it it goes in tune with each other. It's been a really really great great thing to see about those divas ends. But every year, guess what? They got those divas of backs. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where you get one, uh, you get one in the backfield, you get one uh, up front, and then they they work together and they've having great success. Even those linebackers down in Miami, I love to see them, them them guys do their thing. They they've had some great people to play in front of, and some guys in the back end. And Ohio State has been lethal in all all facets of that. I'm pretty interested to see what happens though at three tech because Jay Sean Cornell really really came into his own. He was overshadowed, I think, by everybody. Uh, else on that defensive line really important and Teron Vincent has a guy five star he was the number one defensive tackle recruit in the country two years ago he's been hurt he missed all of last season is he ready for that or do you need to borrow you uh, Schlage, you brought up Tyler Friday I look at him and I see somebody who could maybe you know do some of the things that Adolphus Washington did some of the things that Jay Sean Cornell did and maybe slide inside but uh, I'm just spitballing there what no I mean I think I think Tommy Togiai and, and Haskell Garrett are, are definitely mm-hmm. gonna have to like really step up their game but they've been in the system Right, like some of these guys have already been there and done that and had live bullets. It's why it's so important that in those games, I mean, it's it's so funny how it's all relative, right? Like, there's no way to simulate live bullets, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's so important that when you're when you're playing a team like a Cincinnati or somebody like that, I mean, again, it's Ohio State, right. not bashing anybody, but you should be up forty nine to nothing. Why? Because I got to get live bullets with these dudes so I can right. see what they're doing. Yeah. This is I and mean, this is COVID, right? Like like you. You didn't have spring ball, so you have to go back and look. And then you, when you get into camp, like these guys automatically have to come in and be ready, right? So now they've already had some experience. They already have some live bullets. They've already been with Larry Johnson. They know what's being asked of them. But most importantly, you have a senior group of linebackers that is setting the stage of what to do, right? Because, again, the number one thing a D lineman is you got to go – you know, Coach Aycock always said this, affect the quarterback. We Remember we had him in our lockers oh, yeah, all the time? Yeah. And how do you affect the quarterback? You get him off his spot and you hit him. Right. Right? Like, that's what the interior guys do. They get him off the spot, that free him up. Now he has to turn outside. Boom, he's running into a defensive end, right? But the linebackers, they understand down and distance. They're understanding, hey, you know what? We could run this. I got to go walk out on this guy. Hey, you're going to play a three technique. I can't get there on the run. I want you to slant inside to the A gap. That's automatically going to free it up. I'm going to help you in the B gap. Right. So now you don't have to think about it, right? All I know is, boom, I'm coming inside, going to the A-gap. That linebacker comes in, hits the B-gap, even though he was supposed to have the A-gap, but he's seeing the game. Like, they're going to add a lot of value right. to those interior guys because they know the game. They're, mm-hmm. they're you know, they're four-year seniors, right? So it's all going to go hand-in-hand, hand, but really, who is that going to be on the inside is really going to, I think – make us or break us as far as where we were in run defense because last year we were number one yeah, and they were see. so good right they were so good up front i mean you didn't see anybody running up the middle on us no, no. right yeah jay-z these guys are pretty fired up <clears throat> that we're on <laughs> defensive line I, they, yes. I mean, to the other side of the ball like <laughs> the, i'll tell you the, you let the defensive guys go man and it's just you just see, don't know what pa- you're gonna get this is a passion they're, just not, they're not used to it you know they're, getting, they're, an, getting an education here today yeah i love we're, it we're gonna let these guys cool down we're gonna be right back to talk about something else that might uh more mac and get cheese everybody bites. heated up and, and some mac and cheese bite we'll be right back on letterman live brought to you by roosters Hey everybody, welcome into Roosters, my favorite spot on Olentangy River Road. A fun, casual update with our good friend Nicole Cox. It's July and we've got 
some special promotions going out to get people out and enjoying the good food here. What do we got coming? So we're very, very excited about this. We've been wanting to do this, you know, ever since all of this change has kind yeah. of started. Um, we are doing a thank you celebration to everyone. Um, to us, everybody in the community is a hero, truly a hero. Um, from moms and dads to first responders, healthcare workers, everyone to us is a hero. So we want to thank everyone and all of our loyal guests for their being on generous support during these difficult times um, and so we're doing that by offering 20% off for dine-in and carry-out to everyone <laughs> every Tuesday in July so you come in and basically it's a day we just want to celebrate everyone celebrate all the heroes show our appreciation to the community and we're doing that by offering 20% off I like that it's both because some people still aren't ready to go out and eat and that's mm -hmm. fine so the carry has been working, got the online ordering going. Yes. But you guys have also been doing, because we've been in here now for, I don't know, five or six weeks, inside, table spaced out, all the servers wearing masks. Like it, it, We've been staying on the patio, which is always open. Come sit out here if yes. you can. Like, yes. So you guys have all those bases covered to get people any way that they want out here. We, we are doing the best we can. We're following the guidelines. We are going above and beyond with sanitation. Um, and we just appreciate everyone just bearing with us through all of this <laughs> and their support because it's a, it's a change for everyone. So we thought we'd add some excitement and throw some celebration in there. <laughs> We really want this to be a celebration of everyone. Yeah. And so, yeah, every Tuesday in July, 20% off based to everyone. And you still got, you know, the golf tournament might be coming up. Roosters Foundation still trying to find ways to stay active. And we are. Really interesting we really time. are. Um, we are. We've decided we are still going to have our annual charitable event um, of the golf outing. And um, we've gotten the same sponsors we've had every year. And a huge thank you to all of them. So they've been wonderful. And we will see how it goes. <laughs> it's going to look different. Hey, we all have to get creative right now. But it's really awesome what's going on here. July, Tuesdays, don't miss it. Uh, we're obviously here on Mondays, but uh, if you can't join us, come the next day. It might be better that way anyway, a little <laughs> bit cheaper and save some money and still get the same great food. Nicole, always great to catch up. Come uh, take advantage of that at Roosters, a fun casual joint all month of July. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Roosters here in on Olin Tangy River. Roach Lake is getting caught up right now. <laughs> Didn't give him the full opportunity to prepare because he was eating too many mac and cheese bites, but we're looking at the Big Ten Network's all-decade team. And um, if you follow me at all anywhere, you know that I wasn't – that impressed with some of the work uh, that the voters were doing. What in the Sam Dickens? Are you serious? <laughs> All right, let's talk so about this. Now he's caught up. Now All I'm right. caught up. I don't even need to know. Just go through the list. So, I'll, I'll blow this up. So here's the deal. <laughs> I'm eating a mac and cheese bite right I've now. said this on this so show. Good. I've said this to you guys before. People vote, and they can do whatever they want. Right. But what tends to happen is that people get tired of voting for the same people or the same team, and they look to shake it up, or, exactly. or, or they might want attention. Yeah. I think that that is criminal when you're talking about an all decade honor that people you're supposed to have some value to it some of the voting just made absolutely no sense to me yeah um i don't i started that on running back because jonathan taylor and saquon barkley jonathan taylor wasn't better than jk dobbins what so are we, we talking right about there. yeah i mean what in the sam dickens are we talking about can we talk about heads up heads people up. love heads up matchup he was the highest man contender the most of the year every for, single for time he won. Heads, he yeah. head up man so that's uh, all they go oh, no nah, here I mean, we you go. Hit it on the home it, it's just they can't love on us too much i mean you had the number one player in every position in all facets you wouldn't it wouldn't be wrong you can pick a guy from <laughs> yeah that's the problem. In every position <laughs> and it wouldn't be like somebody like, oh well i don't i don't agree with that you have to i mean not only the fact that what they did in college but how those guys go on and play mm -hmm. in the pros. So when it comes down to all decade, the numbers is there. And they, they, they got it wrong. But, you know, again, like you said, they got to make it. Well, it's, always the same, it's the same it thing wrong. we go through every year. And that's the reason why we had never had a Big Ten coach of the year since Earl Bruce for, for until last year or whatever it was. I mean, people just love to hate the top dog. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, like Doug said, you could have had a guy on the first team at every position probably from Ohio State. And been okay about it and felt pretty good about it, but they just oh, love to hate. And Don't was, knock on them for dominating. I know that was like my, it's not our fault that we just piss excellence. Like if yeah. you if you dominate the Big Ten for the entire decade, which Ohio State did, mm -hmm. nobody else had anywhere near that the success that the Buckeyes did. Well, that list should reflect that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it doesn't at running back with what Zeke did. I mean, come oh on, God. or J.K. Oh, I mean, well, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I understand. <laughs> Selfish. I understand. Like I understand. The J, I, I, I don't understand the JK because he was by far better. Yeah. But 
Saquon, I'm okay with being. I'm 100 percent okay with him. Yep. But without like Zeke, and I and I understand like you can't look him, look at him in the pros because if we did mm-hmm. that, we yep. would automatically say Michael Thomas, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and but was Zeke like, was a beast in college. 100. You know I mean, it's I not mean, like he just blew up and was no. good with the with the boys. He was. National national champion. I'm sorry that all you can Did do is all. run the football, so yeah, your numbers reflect that. Exactly. 250 against Alabama, you know. In the, you can, I, come on. I mean, it's mind blowing. What? They love, all right. I mean, I'm happy they, they put, love the hate. Man. All right. The one they, they, they the, the one they got me most uh, confused. I guess that'll be the word I go with here. Was cornerback. Because well, you you're not even done with offense. Let's go down the list. I want to walk down this because I want to hit. I want to hate on them some more. All right. So they got well, JT. Well, why, I don't even I mean, know one of the receivers. So here's the, here's the thing that really drove it home with the inconsistency with voting is that Wyatt Davis is on the All Decade team as a one year starter at guard, and wow. the Big Ten coaches last year voted him second team All Conference. Yeah, and then he makes the All Decade team. I don't even know how to, with one year. How, so you think on some other guys, maybe they're penalizing people for maybe not being there as long, and you know these guys that they picked had longer careers in the Big Ten, media. but then you do something like that. So Social which do media. you want? Yeah, exactly. It's it's. There's no at, rhyme or reason to what they're doing. You look at how hot he is right now when it comes down to, you know, you know, coining him the best guard. I mean, he's a great player. He had a phenom- I mean, as a guard, he stood out like a guard should have yeah. who's getting this type of recognition. But you got to look at the social media. He hide on social media. I don't know. His, I can't put his Instagram out there, but he got like some videos <laughs> and tapes with the TVs. And all of a sudden he got like the, hey, he, listen, that, that's, that's worthy. You got to put that in the, cat, the, the thing too. <laughs> So he's on there. It's at, marketable. But you pick one guy. They picked Billy Price at, at center. Uh, so Pat Elfline didn't make it, uh, which you can make a case that maybe he could have had Wyatt Davis' spot or both. Um, you know, you mentioned wide receiver. I think it's it's probably justified that Ohio State didn't have one. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah. I understand. And, and if I wanted to pull somebody out, I, I think Devin Smith was one of the most impactful. Yeah. Okay. Never lost right. a game that he scored a touchdown yeah, in, right? right? I know that. that Maslin stand up, up baby. There yeah. You go. I'd tee up Jay Z for that. <laughs> you want to go, you know, no tight end? Cool. You can't really complain too much about that with the mm-hmm. individual numbers for those Buckeyes. Yeah. That kid was good. That Buck kid was good when he yeah. was healthy up there. The quarterback thing was dominated by Ohio State. They didn't even pretend like it was going to be somebody else. Good. They put out a tweet, I think the day before. It was like, well, who do you take? Braxton, JT, Dwayne, or Justin Fields? And I was like, all right, well, you got four yeah. options. Don't forget what Cardale did just in the first well, season. Right, but right. He's not going to win that award, but that's game interesting because JT did get that, I think, based on longevity, Jay-Z. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. if it were me if I, and you had to pick one game to win, like right now, I'm. it sounds crazy after the one year, but I'm thinking I would take Justin Fields mm-hmm. to go win one game. But you couldn't yeah, go wrong with I, Dwayne either. Mm-hmm. And I just wouldn't take Braxton – Solely based on the limited passing ability that I thought he had, mm-hmm. he got on as an all-purpose guy, Schlegs. So which he should. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, that's credit for that. I don't know which guy. Who would you take at the quarterback spot? That's what we were talking. I was trying to think of who, you know, if they're picking White Davis with that's one year. Exactly. I mean, exactly. You have a right. Russell Wilson who, I mean, had a pretty heck of a good year when he was at Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but other than that, in that time period, like, I mean, JT wasn't. I mean, he won a lot of games, and that's all you got to do as quarterback. So, I mean, I guess that – He won two, two silver footballs, never lost yeah, to Michigan. Yeah, he's, and he was consistent, you know. In the he bra- was consistent. He was a consistently good football player. Uh, was he the best quarterback that Ohio State has seen in the last 10 years? Probably not. But he won games, and he was a leader of his team, and he did everything. He checked off almost every single box that a quarterback should, and he could still throw the ball. He right. still had touch, you know, touchdown game. passes. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, it just wasn't he wasn't sitting back there dropping dimes all over the place. But that wasn't what our offense needed at that time. But he has the they like their fourth right? and one quarterback. You know, runs. You know, that's what they liked we when he was few, there. Saw a few of those. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's too. It's like what is quarterback play predicated upon the system that you run? Yeah, right? like no Dwayne, doubt. it was very, very different, right? That's yep. why he set all those records. And then you go look at JT and what we did with him. Then now I think it's more of a hybrid between what Justin Fields is between a JT Barrett and a Dwayne Haskins, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, who do you want? And 100 percent Braxton should be that guy because he's probably the most athletic. Oh, he's probably the best athlete the Big Ten has seen in, in, in a quite very some long time. time right, who could right. do everything? Mm-hmm. And really going into that 14, I remember being at the practice when he went down and it was you know coach meyer did one of these things oh, you know sure, yeah. one of those guys you right know that looks like, and, yeah. yeah and like he was set up to have a great year because he looked phenomenal right and then that happened and set the stage up for for jt but that being said like i'm you know 
I, I like that. I like that pick, and I like the fact yeah. that they actually gave Coach Meyer his due, and like he That's should good. be. Yeah, he was. should be that because I mean, I don't know we who else had to put, just throw the whole thing. I would. In the trash I would. Like 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 ESPN put him at like fifty third best coach of all time. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, we don't need to go. We already debated that on this show. We just threw that one right in the trash. But so they. I, I think that you look at the defense. There were no Ohio State linebackers, so I know that Schlegs might get Shazier. Shazier should have probably been in consideration. But this league has, and here's the thing: when I talk about this, like I'm not saying that, that there aren't good players in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. There are, and a lot of them have had productive careers at this level and the NFL level. That's fine, but we're talking about truly great players. Doesn't mean when they're better about, than the guys we and have. And like I said, when I was trying to get to the corners, like you look at all of these first round picks. Yeah, Dark Quesnard. Really good player. Mm-hmm. He was also a first round pick. We're gonna go with that. Fine. Desmond King, he he won a lot of awards because he got. I think he had won three or four interception game that boosted his stats. Mm-hmm. And so now this fifth round pick is suddenly trumping. We can we can yeah three on three here. years uh, of first round picks. <laughs> Jeff Akuda mm-hmm. for one. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore for two. Denzel Ward. Keep going. Uh, Bradley mm-hmm. Roby. Yeah. Eli Apple. Uh, yeah. Gary on Conley. Um, Pick one. Yeah. Pick yeah. two. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's right, the right. problem. Like, neither, yeah. neither, maybe they split votes. I don't know. So we only to had me, one crazy. DB uh, Malik, on the first Malik team. Got the Malik was first team. No corners. Then you have. I just vomited in Akuda my mouth. And, and I, Bell, that's, second that's, team. that's like a travesty because yeah, wow. I've been pounding this food and it tastes good going back down. But, <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous, man. It is. That's crazy. That's okay. robbery. I don't even know. Yeah, I, mean, I don't, I mean, speech I don't, know, how, I I don't know how voting I, I just, in this world works anymore. I we should all tweet that because I've never heard Schlegs be that speechless. Yeah, before. <laughs> I, no, know, I, mean, yeah. I don't even know. What, it's like it's like yesterday we're playing. Hey, here's how speechless I am. We're playing in a, a 13 U travel baseball game. They took the starting pitcher out, had two other pitchers, and then the the guy who started the game came back in. What? Is that even baseball? No. I was like, what in the Sam <laughs> Dickens? I don't think so. Right? I don't think so either. And I was just like. Go Bucks! Did it happen? No, one hundred percent happened. Well, then I, there you go. I was like, "This is um, this is unbelievable." Just like these cats, I don't even know. Tournament director on the phone. They just want they want any good any kind of publicity right now. Probably for the Big Ten Network is good publicity. We've been talking about talking it for 50, fifteen yeah. minutes, and they know yeah. they know Ohio State fans are very passionate about yeah. it. So they, they the probably do that days. just to. Just to stir something up. Get the number. Get, get, get the clicks. Fans and some Texas yeah. fans. That's we'll what they get trying to do. Get it all going. We we can, well, who about, what about we, D-line? Yeah, what happened bring, on the D-line? We can bring it full circle with can defensive I, line. Yeah, well, Chase good. Young was the only unanimous pick uh, for the all-decade team. Cross the board. All That's the voters voted for him. Joey Bosa got the other nod for Ohio State, I believe. Well, I think Joey was second team. Nick, I think, was second team. Oh, Nick, yeah. Nick was second team. Uh, Joey was first team. Ryan Kerrigan. Who's the other? Chives. Doesn't matter. It wasn't a Buckeye. Oh, uh, JJ Watt, I think. Uh, he's pretty good. He was pretty good. He was pretty okay. <laughs> no, he was pretty okay, guy. I think. Uh, yeah. But that's the question. Like, you're still talking about. I mean, out of Nick, four spots, like, we should have three, though, right? I mean, the Bosa's and Chase Young. I mean, I guess we do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you only could give us two ends, so they, I mean, you really can't get that one one wrong. And then you got second team uh, being Nick, but um, the inside guys maybe not as prominent. And like you said, to put a JJ in there, I mean, it makes a little bit of sense. But you know, if you wanted to, again, you could put a Buckeye at every slot to a certain extent and and, and not have an argument. But they're gonna hate. They're gonna love. The I'm haters. I'm blown away by this corner deal. Yeah, that corner deal was. D- That's different. just garbage. Well, and so that it opens it up the way that this vote came down. I think well, I want to know the voters. I, Who voted I'll, for this? I'll give you the list when we get off the air. You it's can probably is there a list? start blowing up the tweets. Yeah, um, Jared Doney, that guy probably he's, he's on there. Yeah. Mark May, uh, not Mark not Mark May. May but no. <laughs> I know I'm That'd not sure. A Mark May move. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. That's not, that's I don't know Did where Josh Mark May Perry has <laughs> any type of vote in this. I I think Urban voted. I don't. Josh Perry probably voted. Uh, I'm going to talk to him. So those you can start with those guys. Yeah. But the way that this all worked out, I, I think you can build an all decade all Buckeyes team that would be favored over the team that the BTN put out. Now you have to like figure out if you're going to take the Bosa and Chase Young back off and give them somebody else. But oh, they're that's still fine. Enough, Let that's them ours. have somebody else. Yeah, but there's yeah. still enough. Yeah. There's you still put, enough talent, especially a corner. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. You're just we would have, be benching guys if we were going to play a game with the guys that we could pick from. Even if you can only pick two corners, which first, yeah. which two corners are you going to leave? I mean, off? the like, fact that they put a, a fifth round 
draft pick corner over yeah. five of our guys. No, heck, man, you might as well say, hey, man, let's throw Andrew Norwell in there because he was a <laughs> undrafted free agent and the highest paid guard in the NFL. Like, right, stick to right Tonka in there. Yeah. White Buffalo. <laughs> what are we talking about? What about the Apex? You know? <laughs> I mean, Aaron hey, Rodgers well, is following his stuff on every single snap. Well, he's got to deal with two Remington winners, so I, I kind of yeah. get that one. Yeah, Mike tough. Jordan was an All-American who played both guard and center. I mean, it was it's crazy the amount of talent. And guess what? If you're taking that All-Buckeyes, All-Decade team, then you get the benefit of that. And we line them up against the oh, the, we our, our oh, yeah. team would win hands down. Yeah, I sure. feel like it wins. Yeah, yeah. no doubt it wins. It, it wins. Hands that's down. with any of our four quarterbacks too. Right. Yes, I mean you're, you're picking. <laughs> yeah, I mean come on, what are we doing here? You leave Braxton back out there as the as the all purpose. Yeah, player. leave him out there as that. You got Mike Thomas on the outside. You got but think about the all purpose too, like Curtis. You're forgetting about oh, yeah. the Curtis Samuel Jeez. season. Mm-hmm. I mean that was absolutely insane what he did. Did he get season. second? Did he get a second team? I don't all know purpose? where. I don't know where he is. I don't think he made. I don't even know if they had a second team all purpose. it was just like Braxton. We got to put Braxton on here somewhere. Right. So we just make up this. He was everything. Name. Yeah, he was. He was so they made up a spot for Drew <laughs> Peppers too. Because yeah, Drew. Yeah, they wanted to give him some attention. Yeah, of course, for they some did. reason. For, for some reason, for one of the most underwhelming defensive careers. Yeah. Hold on, he had one interception, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. on a deflection. Yeah. Yeah. we tied. I had one too. So I had to <laughs> uh, that is so <laughs> gross. Good. He made the All Decade team. Sure did. Schlage, you may have had an interception back in the day, right? I did. I yeah, had one. See? I mean, if that, that's <laughs> all purpose guy right here. Let's go. My stuff, Dad. You ever touchdown? No. You suck, Dad. <laughs> okay. Well, you couldn't take no that bucks. pick to the house? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. I'm awful. All right. This has been a fun, casual conversation. Yeah. Had a great time with these three, as always. Doug Worthington, Justin Zwick, Anthony Schlegel. Uh, we're going to be back here as long as they'll let us every Monday yeah, please, for please. Letterman Live at Roosters. Uh, and then the day after that, Tuesday, all throughout July, come in and get 20% off. Uh, everybody in the community, yes. great, awesome. great give back, a reward for everybody here. Uh, stay safe out there at this point. Remember, we've got to keep wearing these so that we can have college football this season. Wear a mask. Uh, stay safe out there, and then we'll see you next week right here at Roosters for Letterman Life. Social distance. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.